There's so many digital art tips and techniques that artists use to convert their grayscale illustrations to color. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some of my favorite ones so you guys can do the same. Starting with a light pencil and then going with that approach where you're only focused on the values. Real quickly though, I believe the reason why this approach is even a thing is because you know maybe it's actually easier to just kind of go with grayscale and you just have to worry about the values the darks the lights the in-betweens and stuff like that versus having to deal with all these colors at the same time it can get really tricky especially if you're not used to color or you're not that great with color theory and this and blah 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 so it just depends on you and how you work there are artists that go from grayscale to color because while they're rendering and figuring out all the values. They don't want to be thinking about color. They just want to focus on, on the lights, the darks, the shadows, the values, and that's it. And then they'll worry about color afterwards. Normally, I don't use this approach. In fact, I rarely paint like this. I've always wanted to improve my painting skills. And so I've been looking up tutorials, even myself looking up tutorials to get better at it. So, you know, hopefully this video will be a good excuse for me to test out what I've learned so far. I will say versus working with color, there is something lost when you're putting it together. Like sometimes different colors can come out with a very similar value. And so overall it can be really tricky to work with. You use the gradient map because if you just try to color directly over the grayscale, it might come off very muddy, especially if you're not using adjustment layers, different blending modes, filters, and all that good stuff. But we'll cover it all when we start to convert this to color. The character used as a model in this video is Neon from my series Apple Black. You guys can go check that out. It's published in Zero on Saturday AM. Links to that and so much more will be in the description, including my social media, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed the video so far, please hit the like, leave a comment if you have any questions, subscribe, and let's get into it. So once you're done rendering, getting all the values together, one of the first things I like to do is go up here and click on curves. In here, you can kind of give a very subtle S curve starting from the top right to just adjust the contrast a little bit. Make it pop. The next adjustment we worry about is the gradient map. So you click on that and then you get this box. But once you have that toggled on, it creates this layer in the layer box and then everything under it, all the layers underneath the gradient map adjustment layer gets affected and then you can adjust the colors over here. You hit the color and then you hit the box underneath and then you can just kind of move the colors around. You kind of want to go from dark on the left to something lighter on the right, but you can change the colors just from here with the gradient map. If you click right underneath the gradient, not the presets at the top of the gradient at the bottom, if you click right underneath it, you can insert a new color in between. So you see people having gradients that go from one color to the other, maybe three colors, four colors, five, and you just keep playing with it until you get exactly what you want. This is just for you to get familiar with what's actually happening. And this is the gradient map adjustment layer. All the adjustment layers, once you click on them, they create a new layer and they affect every other layer underneath. Sometimes they only affect specific layers if you clip the adjustment layer to that layer, or if you had something selected already and then you click the adjustment layer, it's only going to affect that selected area. And you'll be able to identify this because on the adjustment layer, you can see that there is a mask. And if the whole mask is full white, that means the full canvas is being affected. But if there are some black spots, that means that those black spots are the only parts that aren't affected. To really grasp this, you would need to have a decent understanding on how masks work, as well as how layers work, and as well as how adjustment layers work. So using gradient maps, once you understand them, there are many ways and many approaches to use, but here's one. You can create a new layer and fill in your illustration with different colors. Now the colors here don't necessarily have to be the colors you have in mind for what you want to convert the grayscale to. These are just colors that have enough contrast from one another to separate them. So you'd want a different color for the skin area. You want a different color for the hair area. You essentially would want a different color 
for all the parts of your illustration that are different colors from one another. The goal here is not to actually color it just yet, even though even though I've gone with a similar skin color here, I even changed the blending mode to color, which you know we'll get to as we go on. But the goal here is just to have colors that are very different from one another occupying those spaces that are going to be different eventually, you know, color wise on this uh, grayscale illustration. So I'm giving the skin one color. It can all be on one layer. I should have titled the layer flats. But just to test it out, we'll just color just the skin. Then I'm going to create a gradient map. You just click on it, it will automatically create a gradient map. You can see that the gradient map is affecting the whole canvas. But if you hit Alt, or depending on what computer you have, Alt or Option, and you hover in between the layer where the gradient map is and what you want to clip it to, which is directly under it, and you click, you're going to clip the gradient map to the layer underneath. And now, it's essentially only going to be affecting the parts that we colored in. And then you can make adjustments. It's difficult to see here because of the blending mode I'm on. Blending modes, again, that's another thing that, you know, it's always nice to experiment with and then you'll get it. But because I have the blending mode on color and I already messed with it a little bit, it's not doing everything we want exactly. Even then when I'm changing the colors and adding to them, you can kind of see in a subtle way what's going on. All I'm doing here is then trying to find the right blend, the right gradient for it to look like skin. As you can see, as I unclipped the gradient map, it affected the whole canvas, but it changed a whole lot more because because when you clip a layer to another layer, if that other layer's blending mode is changed, it's going to affect the layer that's being clipped, right? So now the gradient map adjustment layer has a normal blending mode versus the layer that it was clipped to where the blending mode there was color. So that's something to keep in mind as well. I probably should have kept it normal regardless. Aside from this, playing around with the adjustment layers can also teach you guys a couple new tricks that you might want to apply elsewhere or help you understand the whole software even better. Or come up with new techniques yourself. Even though I'm coloring in with, you know, a color similar to skin, it doesn't matter what color you pick. I'm just going to be filling out the parts that I want to affect. I could have gone over the whole illustration and you want to go over the illustration with colors that are very contrast from one another and create separation. That way they're easier to select because that's the goal of this layer. Even though I changed the blending mode, I just want to see things better. The goal is to be able to select it easily and that's shortcut W or however you want to select it. But remember, if you have something selected before you hit an adjustment layer, once you hit the adjustment layer, it's only going to affect the selected parts. While on the flats layer, we're selecting the part that we want to map a gradient to, and it's easier to select because of how the colors are in contrast with one another. And then you create an adjustment layer and automatically it just latches on to the part that was selected. Now we can play around with a gradient until we get what we want. So essentially you want to be doing this for every part of the illustration. After using the flats layer to select the area on the illustration that we want, we can actually turn that layer off so we can see exactly how the gradient map is working. You keep doing this until you find the right blend, but it can be a little tricky if you're not used to gradients, especially if you're not used to the gradient map adjustment layer. But then you go back in and we just want different colors for all the different parts of the character. You can select those parts easily and create gradient maps for those parts once we select them. Example, I select the hair. You then want to create a new gradient map just for the hair and then you play around with that gradient until you get what you want. Now this, I think this method works best if you're working on an illustration that has like line art. So everything is already kind of separated for you. It's easier to work that way. But if you're doing things that are a little more painterly and no line art like we have here, there's a different method still with a gradient map, but a different method that I prefer. So back to square one, hit the curves, and then we get a gradient map for the whole thing all at once. And I like to go for something a little dark bluish purple versus something a little warmer in the top left. If you want to save the new gradient you've created, just hit new and it'll add it to the presets so you can always come back to it. Then I clip it 
so it's only affecting neon versus the whole canvas. After that, I create a new layer above it, and I change the blending mode from normal to color. And I literally just go over the illustration with the colors that I want. Here, you gotta keep in mind that it's not always gonna be some flat color. So for instance, with the skin, I'm gonna make sure to airbrush certain parts and make it feel more alive, where blood is gonna be in the face, like the cheekbones and things like that. Eventually, at least once I'm done adding everything else, and you know, a little blush or you know, signs of blood, you definitely don't want it all to feel too flat. You can get away with just laying out flats to a degree because we've already done a lot of the hard work while we're rendering the grayscale, but still, the skin is a perfect example where you don't want just one flat color throughout the whole thing. Some parts would be rather than others, and you gotta keep that in mind. Stuff like this is what I was talking about that gets lost a little bit and it's hard to kind of pinpoint if you just go in grayscale. You know, the lips will kind of be a different color, especially if you're trying to be a little more realistic. I kind of reduce the opacity to like an 80 if I feel things are a little bit too saturated. You might want to have another adjustment layer for the brightness slash contrast. I'm just gonna reduce the brightness a little bit. Maybe you play around the contrast, depends on you, but I'm just kind of making things a little darker. Then on a new layer with a very warm orange, changing the blending mode to color dodge. Just having light hit her from behind. Make the illustration pop a little more. In the eyes, I kind of reinforce like the highlights hitting the eyes. And then this part is where we kind of go over the illustration. It's almost like we're rendering again, but now it's just little tiny little things here and there. Give it a little more oomph and a little more sauce. So I'm putting in more hair strands. Things that would have been hard to nail while I was laying down the color. So here it's kind of like just throwing in that color above it. I think it'll all look better for it. Then I have another layer, as you can see, like a saturated dark blue. I selected the whole canvas and I filled it all in. And you, you can see all the cool stuff is actually doing when, when you switch out the blending modes. But I'm going to go to linear burn. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity of it. Then I'll pull it down so I can clip it to the illustration of just her because I just want it to affect her. I don't want it to affect the background. You can see the mask on the side, it's all white, meaning that's affecting the whole canvas, but because it's clipped to neon, it's only going to show on neon. I can take an airbrush in black and then kind of make certain parts of the illustration pop. So that layer to me is kind of like uh, an extra dynamic shadow. You can see how it looks when we toggle the layer off and on. Kind of want some shadows where the hair is kind of covering parts of her face. Little things like that. Underneath the eyebrows, underneath the jaw, keeping track of all that kind of stuff. I want a dark blue because, you know, I just wanted a dark blue. It's up to you what colors you use. I highly recommend you guys experiment with me. I guarantee you'll pick up some things. You'll learn new tricks that you can kind of twist and maybe create new styles for yourself. Another adjustment layer is selective color. And here, I want to turn that on. I want it to affect the whole thing. You have it be on black, you then reduce black and maybe increase whatever colors you want. But what this does, while it's on black, if you reduce black, everything that kind of has like a black tint hue to it gets minimized. And if you increase the other colors, they kind of take its place. Again, experimentation to me is the best way to learn what I'm talking about. Because that's how I learned. Now we can come back in, add even more sauce to her eyes. Be captivated. Let her captivate and steal your mans. Another thing you can do is having a very soft filter over it. So I essentially select all the layers. I duplicate them. And then I merge them and throw them at the top. Because of some blending modes, it might look a little weird. So I'm gonna delete some things, remove them off. I just selected that and deleted. That's from the color dodge layer, but now it's on the normal layer, so it looks weird. 
Once you merge several layers together, they form a new layer, obviously, but that layer is in a normal blending mode. So if a previous layer you had was in a different blending mode, like the color dodge, in this new layer, it'll just act normally. So I'm just gonna remove it, delete it. And then make sure the whole canvas is selected, at least everything on the merge layer. I'll then give it a blur of like 30, change the blending mode to lighten, and then reduce the opacity to about 30%. Overall, it just gives the illustration a very nice, soft touch. Want more sauce? I select all the layers again, duplicate, merge, throw it at the top, and now I wanna give like a subtle 3D effect. And that's by hitting channels, pick a color, green, and then at the top where the eye icon is to make it all visible. And then command A and then command T. And then just shift everything to the left or right. Just shift it a little bit. And depending on how much you shift it, it'll give a 3D effect. I don't wanna shift it too much. That's all I need. And once you're done, you hit enter. That's it. You want even more sauce, select the whole thing, and you can give it a noise filter. It makes everything a little crisp. Just go to the top, hit filter, and then hit noise, and then everything else is self-explanatory. I don't always do this, but I do it sometimes. And then you're done. We've gone from grayscale to color. There are many ways to do it. You just need to have a strong understanding of the adjustment layers, especially the gradient map, a strong understanding of the blending modes, layers, filters, and then you should be good. For those who are watching and not subscribed, I'm going to fight you. I will fight you. For the rest of you, if you enjoyed this video, please like. For the two and a half people that made it to the end of this video, I thank you. Holy you go, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Leave comments if you have any questions. Check out my social media and my comic Apple Black. Links to everything you could possibly need will be in the description below. Check out more videos. Swipe manga. And I'm Audi 9000.